add uh, some decimals. So for example, the 72 inches, then what's the likelihood, 13.20 uh, likelihood of the pitcher being uh, 72 inches. Now it's likely that if we're asking a question of whether or not I have uh, any chance of being a pitcher or something, we might be saying, well, I might be able to get between like some range so you might say, if I add that range, you have a 26.71 likelihood, or maybe this height or less, right, might be a question that we would be asking. Uh, and add them up, though, because we're looking at the area under uh, the curve. So it might get a, a given an approximation to do that, but you would have to do the norm.discumulative function to get that number. But before we do that, let's compare this to the actual data. So this is the actual data, which we'll do a frequency, frequency, frequency calculation. And let's go to the home tab here and black, white, and wrap it, wrap up the frequency because we want to frequency, frequency, middle, tried to do a wrap, but I don't think there's any much that rhymes with frequency. Any case, let's go ahead and then this is going to be equal frequency tab, and we're going to pick up our data array. So the frequency is going to be saying, how many times does our data over here show up in these buckets? And the bucket is going to be, for example, the second one, how many times do, do the items in our data uh, uh, show up to equal or less than 64 or from above 64 up to and including 65, which would be the second one, right? So I'm going to select my data over here, control shift down and then control backspace and then tack and then comma. We're going to pick up our X's, which will be our buckets, control shift down, control backspace. And then there is our thing. I'm going to close up and enter. It spills it out. Once again, it goes a little long, so I usually go back up and try to say I don't want that last one. So it stops right there. And then I can double check to see if my data is picked up by saying total. Let's sum this up. I'm going to say alt equals here to sum, alt equals, enter, 100%. That makes sense because most of our data is within four standard uh, deviations. And then I'm going to say alt equals here. And this comes out to 1,040. Uh, 1,340, <laughs> 1,034. So I can double check that number by saying, this is my count of my data. And I can count my data. These are, these are the data points that we have of the pictures, heights. So I can say equals count brackets. And I wanna go here and say control shift down, enter. And there's 1,034 data points. So that makes sense because now we've applied all those data points to these buckets. Now note that I can't really I can't really compare the frequency I have in my actual data to these percentages unless I either convert my percentages to frequency. I can do that by saying I'm going to take this for example times times this and then I, I see and then I can compare the two numbers with a relative with the same data set or and this is probably more useful oftentimes I'm going to take my data set and turn it into a percent by dividing by the total so I'm going to now say this is going to be my uh, percent of this will be the percent of total of my data set home tab uh, font group black white center wrap it and then wrap it let's do this wrap okay then we're going to say this equals i keep on wanting to do a rap but i can't think of a rhyme do raps even have to rhyme because poetry doesn't rhyme anymore and they still call it poetry but whatever so then this one is going to be this last one i need to say f4 dollar sign before the h and the 22 and enter and then I'm going to put my cursor on this one. Let's percentify it. Home tab, number group, percentify it. Add some decimals. Double clicking on the fill handle, dragging it down. So now we have 
this one. I'm gonna delete that last bit because I wanna total it up this way. Alt equals totaling it, giving us, uh, if I get rid of the decimals, or let's make this wider. There it is, 100%, 100%, 100%. So then if I look at the difference, difference, now I can compare and say, let's make this black, white, uh, alignment, center, and wrap it. Wrap it like it's a Christmas something. Wrapping it, man. And then we're gonna say this is this minus this, and I'll make that into a percent. And then double click, pulling it down. And so there we have it. So now we can see we have our data set. We can see that the mean is similar to the median. We can see the mode is also similar, indicating that it might ha might be uh, in alignment with a actual bell uh, shape curve. We can also see that if I plot the bell shape curve and compare it to my actual data on a percentage basis, that it's pretty close, a lot of these data points. So we're thinking now that our bell shape curve might have some significant uh, predictive power. If I then plot my bell curve over here, selecting my percent data on the bell curve, I can say then let's uh, insert charts and make a histogram from it. And so there we have a bell curve. And now you can see, okay, that bell curve looks like, uh, looks like it, it, it uh, approximates our data to some degree. And I can also then, let's, let's do our standard thing. I'm gonna go to my select data up top and I'm gonna go to the X ones and put in my own X's cause it shouldn't start at one. Let's edit the, the X's. It should start at 64 up to 83. Don't just do your own thing, Excel. You, you have to use the X's that we give you. You can't just make up like your own thing. And then we can put the actual data on top of it if we wanted to, to plot them together, right? So I could then say, all right, let's, let's go to the chart design data and then let's add our actual data, which I'm gonna represent in a percent format this time. And then I'm gonna make sure to delete this, be careful with the data series. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna represent the data this time as a percent, the actual data as a percent, not picking up the 100 down below and boom and boom and i go okay and you could see you know they're pretty close right so that so that again another indication that the bell curve would be an, a, a good approximation now next time we'll do an area curves because the area curves is what we're often think about when we're thinking about the area uh under the curve so we'll continue on this next time